will be people groups that are close in proximity to Israel, not just geographically, but genetically as well. These will be the Arab people, the fraternal twins, if you will, the descendants of Esau, the Edomites. And there is such a thing as an Edomite. They call them Palestinians. They're really Edomites. That's what my mom was. That's what I am. Half of me is. I think it's this half over here. <laughs> and the other half is Egyptian. But I am an Arab. But these are the descendants of Edom. Very pronounced in Bible prophecy. And so these surrounding peoples, it's really a melting pot of all the ites, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Hittites, the uh, Yebusites, the flashlights, the termites, the, all the ites, right? Well, they're all going to come against Jerusalem and it will all be because of the Jerusalem problem, the holy basin, and they will want a special regime and they'll want to internationalize, or if I can say it this way, ecumenicalize, probably not a word, but I just made it up. It's in the JDV. They want to bring together all of the world's religions. And when I see a rally there like Glenn Beck had with almost some estimate a half a million people saying, hey, let's all come together. Let's all turn back to God. Which God? Which God? Oh, come on. Even then President George W. Bush said that Allah and Jehovah are the same God. That's blasphemy and never repeat that. Allah is not Jehovah. Allah is a false God. Jehovah is the true and living God. And what's going to happen is they're going to be drawn to this false God, this false Christ, this antichrist, this all-encompassing ecumenical Christ. And the antichrist will put together and rule over a one world religion where they all share the same stage. And they will all share that same stage where in Jerusalem, once they can figure out what to do about the burdensome boundary stones, the dividing of Jerusalem into a two-state, a Palestinian state and a Jewish state. And it's interesting because it does seem to me that as we watch now these surrounding peoples, Lebanon, even in Jordan, and Egypt, and then Syria, who is a proxy of Iran, not one of them are mentioned in Ezekiel 38. In other words, it is very likely that Zechariah 12 will be fulfilled prior to Ezekiel 38, because God's going to make Judah like a hearth of fire is going to devour them. They're going to be like the wood, and Israel will be like the fire, and they'll just completely destroy them. You know, you got to understand that the surrounding peoples are terrified of Israel, Every time they attack them, that's, ask Egypt and Jordan. <laughs> that's why they made peace treaties with them. Every time they attack Israel, Israel gets more land. Ask Syria about the Golan Heights. And, and by the way, for those of you that are going to Israel with us, we're going to be right there on this Temple Mount, right next to the Dome of the Rock, the Mosque of Omar. And we're going to be standing on what I believe will be the very site where the Antichrist will allow the Jews to rebuild their third temple. Then he'll set himself up in that temple and demand that he be worshipped and he'll commit the abomination that causes desolation. And I'm getting ahead of myself and I should probably at this time look at our second article. Now this was on Thursday the 2nd. Again, Arut Sheva uh, uh, headline. Netanyahu and Abbas in closed door meeting as direct talks begin. Now here's the article or an excerpt from it. Direct talks between Israel and the Palestinian Authority began Thursday morning in Washington. Some news agencies labeled the ceremony historic, but many observers expect the talks to collapse soon after they begin. Why? Because of Hamas. Hezbollah, Fatah, they'll never honor anything that Abbas does. And even if they seemingly do, it will be for the purpose of once there is a peace agreement, which Obama, by the way, is demanding be uh, in place in one year. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton 
we want a two-state solution in one year. And they're demanding it. And even if Abbas and Netanyahu agree to it, and by the way, I think Abbas's days are numbered, it will be a ruse. And then at that point, that's when under the banner of peace and security, or when in Ezekiel 38, Israel dwells securely, they'll bring the walls down, let their guard down, and that's when sudden destruction will come. Now, the article goes on to say, Abbas made clear he expected negotiations to begin where they had left off in the past. Interesting. Explaining that, watch this, quote, we're not starting from scratch because we had many rounds of negotiation between the PLO and the Israeli government. Did you catch that? Uh, turn to Daniel 9.27. I know this is a passage that is familiar to most of you, but I think there's a misnomer here because we have this idea that the Antichrist will sign the peace agreement. He's the one... He's the architect of this peace plan for seven years where he brings Jew and Israel, uh, Jew and uh, Arab, uh, and Jew and Muslim together and signs this peace, uh, seven-year peace agreement. Well, that's not necessarily what Daniel 9.27 says. Let me read it for you, and then I want to tie it in and connect it with this article that we just read an excerpt from. Daniel writes of the Antichrist, he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, speaking of the seven years. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him him. Okay, that's kind of gnarly, I realize, and that's okay maybe for some, and for some, maybe this is the first time you're hearing uh, this prophecy even talked about, let alone taught. Uh, let me see if I can uh, simplify it here a little bit. The Antichrist will confirm something that has already been on the table. Now, let me see if I can illustrate it this way. Let's suppose that I have an appointment with you for Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, I can't, by the way, I'm booked all week, but let's just say hypothetically that at 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, I have an appointment with you. Now, uh, there's already an agreement. It still isn't confirmed, though. Now, I may, and sometimes I do, I'll send out an email. I usually don't call, but I, email is quicker. I'll send out an email to confirm what we agreed upon as a time that was set to get together at 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. That's what is being said here, and that's what's being prophesied here. In the original language of the Old Testament Hebrew, it has the thought of making certain, confirming. In other words, what Abbas says is what Daniel 9.27 says. Listen again to what this article quotes him as saying, he says, we're not starting from scratch because we had many rounds of negotiation between the PLO and the Israeli government. In other words, we don't need to start over. We've already got a peace agreement. We just need for it to be confirmed. Enter Daniel 9, 27. See, the Antichrist is going to confirm it. He's going to make certain of it, and then that's how he's going to bring them together and sign this peace agreement for a period of seven years, and then it's halfway through, after allowing the Jews to rebuild the temple, that he will set himself up in that temple, and he will demand to be worshipped, and he will commit an abomination that many believe will be the sacrificial uh, a animal of an unclean animal, some believe a pig, and that he will sprinkle the blood on the altar, and then that's when Israel will realize this is not our Christ. 
This is not our Messiah. This is not our true Christ. And because of them embracing the false Christ, being deceived by the false Christ, because of their rejection of the true Christ, will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And for the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation, they will flee to a place called Petra, many believe, I believe. (laughs) And for the last three and a half years, the Lord will protect his people Israel from the Antichrist whom Revelation describes as seeking to destroy her, continuing to try to destroy her. But the Apostle Paul to the Roman church said that the whole house of Israel will be saved. But it comes in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the middle of that seven times hotter furnace met the Lord and the Lord protected them in that furnace and they did not get burned and they did not perish. You might say they were saved. And by the way, that is a picture of the pre-tribulation rapture. Oh, pastor, there you go again. Yes, there I go again. Is that every week? We already believe that the the rapture happens before the seven-year tribulation. Can you just give us a Sunday off? from the pre-tribulation rap? No, I cannot, and here's why. Not only do we need to know that we believe that the rapture is before the tribulation, we need to know why we believe the rapture is before the seven-year tribulation. It's the more sure word of prophecy. See, there's this thing called typology, and in the scriptures, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are a picture of the nation Israel. And they go into the seven times fiery furnace, just like Israel goes into the seven-year tribulation. Well, how does that picture or point to prophetically in typology a pre-tribulation rapture? Ah, where's Daniel? Where's Daniel? Daniel is a picture of the church, conspicuously absent and not present there in the furnace. He does not go into the seven times hotter fiery furnace. Why? He has been exalted to a high position and has been removed from that equation. Daniel pictures the church. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hebrew slaves, picture the Hebrews, the Jews, the nation Israel they will go into and make it through the tribulation. Now, why? Well, that's the purpose of the tribulation. The purpose of the tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. We're already saved. There's no purpose in us going through the seven-year tribulation. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Who's Jacob? Jacob, he had a name change. Uh, Not because of ID theft. He had a name change by God himself from Jacob to Israel. Had 12 sons that would become the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's the time of Israel's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church's trouble. We're not in trouble with God. Israel's in trouble with God. (laughs) They've rejected God. They've rejected the Messiah. They've rejected the Christ. They're in big trouble. They are in deep kimchi. We're not. We've accepted Christ. So we don't have to go into the seven-year tribulation or the seven-year or seven times hotter fiery furnace. And isn't it interesting that it's right in the middle of that fiery furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar, I think this is humorous, and this is what convinces me that God has a sense of humor, because he says of Nebuchadnezzar that, he said, hey, wait a minute, guys. We, we, put, we threw three guys in that furnace. And even the guys that threw them in got burned up, by the way. And Shadrach and Meshach. And then he says, I, I'm doing the math, and there's four in there, and one looks like the son of the gods, or the son of God. It is the son of God. It's a Christophany. Oh my goodness, what is a Christophany? Simply, it is a pre-Bethlehem appearance of the person of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And you'll find the Old Testament filled with appearances of Jesus Christ. By the way, uh, he was there in Genesis 1.1. Have you ever noticed that it, it doesn't say, let me create man in my image. It's, 
let us create man in our image. Listen, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but that seems plural to me. That means that there's more than one. Yes, there is. There's God the Father, God the